I have done a lot of work with these next two gentlemen, but this one was the debut episode when we first met and shared some insights that these guys added to you guys. Uh, subsequently, they have come to Australia and shared and trained with you guys. I have been over there and worked in their organization. We've both been on each other's podcasts and here they are with the debut episode, Greg McDaniel, the best prospector that I have ever seen globally, one of the best ever, and uh, his business partner and partner in crime, Matt Johnson. The three of us, we get together for the first time on Aussie kind of turf, and we, uh, we see what they can add to your business. You want the normal real estate training you've been told a million times, make cold calls, knock on doors, best be switching off now because in this podcast we go out of the box using unknown tactics primarily that the real estate industry has never heard of in order to get you called in more often, convert those listings and get more success without the painful cold calling. Listen up, we're in for a ride. This is Real Estate Renegades. Wow, guys, welcome to another in our training, in our CD of the month, in our various methodologies. In fact, my guest today is probably going to be instrumental in helping me join, take this crazy world of ours into the podcast community. You guys may not know these guys, but I tell you, Matt Johnson and Greg McDaniel are kind of like the USA equivalent of me and Chris Gilmore. That's why I got so, I've had such a good time getting to know these guys. Matt Johnson, right beside me over here, wherever you're looking, is um, he's like the me over there. He's like the marketing. Ge- In fact, I'm not saying he's the me. He's a better marketer than me. He knows his stuff, right? He's a podcast legend. He's the marketing brains kind of behind the operation that kind of does my equivalent of what I do with Chris Gilmore. And I'm loving with Matt's skill set. I'm going to love picking his brain off air. I'm not going to bore you guys with this stuff. That's taking my world into the podcast world and off these CDs of the month and the way that I now deliver to you training right now, that's Matt Johnson. The fellow below us is kind of the Chris Gilmore version of their team. He's the (laughs) living, breathing, executing real estate weapon that is out there in the marketplace listing and selling a whole bunch of real estate each and every day. And that is Greg McDaniel. So lads, I'm so cool to have (laughs) my US doppelgangers hanging and banging. (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. I love the I living, like breathing w- real estate weapon. I am so using <laughs> right. that. I'm right, that literally in. writing that down. Real Take estate weapon one. of execution. Man, it's like, I love it. I yeah. love it. Um, so, guys, I know we, we haven't got a lot of time with you guys, and we are going to do some more stuff. I've got to get you guys to come down to Australia to an event. You guys are, are really breathing all of the stuff that I – because I tell you, here, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret for my guys. All the stuff that I implement is very similar to the stuff that you guys teach your guys about positioning as an expert and all of those things. Over here, I'm seen as a rogue, renegade, out-of-the-box, thought-leading thinker because I copy off other industries that primarily here in Australia don't think like this, right? So Mm. we, we don't kind of think in ways like, you know, authoring a book so that you're seen as a celebrity specialist and all of that. That was revolutionary when I introduced it to Australia. And you guys are sitting there thinking, geez, not much of a rebel out of the box thinker when he's doing pretty <laughs> standard stuff, right? So, uh, and that's, I suppose, been my, my claim to, to infamy, so to speak, is by mm-hmm. sort of copying the sorts of things that you guys are doing. So what I'd love is, um, I know we've only got a short amount of time. I can't wait to have you guys in a more in-depth thing, but let's, kind of get the ball rolling a little bit with um uh now how accurate was i with my intro of you did i kind of sum up the the, the team of you guys pretty accurately yeah yes except for the fact i annoy the shit out of matt and he doesn't pick up my calls in, 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 in retaliation but yes besides that we are oh, perfect and to retaliate greg insults my imaginary wife three children and claims that i'm a hermit that lives by myself in a cabin in the woods all is true i never falsifies anything matt uh, no. wow no. No, we, we, Matt and I have a blast. All we're all, what we do on our show is we bring a ton of value like you're talking about, Glenn, and the fact that like we simultaneously make up shit right and left. Well, I make up shit right and left and call it in, retar- in returns to like uh, different people. Like we're now on uh, Bob from Remax, that fucker. God, oh, Bob. Remax. Bob from Remax. You know, we, bag. Yeah, and we just have a lot of fun like that, man. But yeah, you, you nail it, man. Nice, nice, nice. Well, let's go into what I kind of like doing, given that we're flying without a net here, and that's good. I kind of like it like that. Um, <laughs> 
if you took real estate and put it into four quadrants, we took quadrant one, however this is looking, quadrant one up here is everything that happens before the listing opportunity. So marketing mm -hmm. or prospecting, however, you know, I kind of don't like too much prospecting. I like getting my community to call me. But anything mm -hmm. that happens before the opportunity to list, then we've got stuff that happens to convert business, then we've got stuff that happens to do the job well, open homes and all of that. And then there's what happens after the sale and that's maintenance and that database and that's follow up. Mm -hmm. So if you took real estate in those four quadrants, let's give them today, you know, instead of Led Zeppelin's greatest hits or what's about ZZ Top's greatest hits, <laughs> right? We'll give them ZZ Top's greatest hits instead of the ZZ Top entire back catalog, right? Because we've only got a little bit of time. Thank God. So oh, yeah. if we were doing greatest Man, hits. Man, that's a lot of facial hair. <laughs> Hey man, those are good looking beards. We don't we don't have enough facial hair no, between the three of us to add up to no. one ZZ Top. <laughs> you know you know what's funny about that? The guy in ZZ Top who doesn't have a beard is named Frank Beard. I love that. I, know. What? I love freaking, that. Freaking drummers. I love oh that. God. That is so good. No, I can't grow a beard. I'll tell you what. I'll change my name by Deed Paul to Beard. Is that enough? <laughs> yes. Yes. That is perfect. <laughs> that will do. So if we oh were to take God. those quadrants, Matt, let's start with you. From a marketing perspective, yep. we'll talk about Greg the execution legend machine weapon in a moment. <laughs> I um, love this podcast. <laughs> I love this podcast. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> I'm never going to get him to shut up on our own show. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, yeah, what, what do you right. reckon, Matt? Let's start with you. The, All the, right, so the, the qu quadrant stuff, number one. Quadrant one. What are your greatest yeah. hits? Well, to me, to me, to me, quadrant one and quadrant four are virtually the same because it's it's the I, I tend to look at in terms of content, uh, concentric circles. So that's your outer ring. Uh, so it's your it's your database and the people that you're basically trying to draw them into that circle. So um, to me, it's a, it's a lot of the same thing, which is. And Greg is a master at executing this, which is communicating with them and staying in touch with them with the the means that they want to be communicated with. So for for my audience personally in the marketing world, that's through print, that's through you know blogs and things like that. For Greg, for the for the general consuming public, it's all about Facebook Live. Yeah. Uh, and, and then if you can extend that out into Instagram and things like that, build up your positioning and you put the right message out there. Uh, Glenn, you're a master at this in terms of presenting yourself the right way. But then you have to put that into the format that the people want. Uh, and that depends on your market. It depends on your age group. So you have to really go out and find what they're looking for and then put out content that speaks to them, that, in, that is in the mode that they want to receive it in. And, and Greg, you've kind of found the niche with that. But that's, that's my best tip for that is to look at that as the same kind of group of people. Uh, your past clients go right into Quadrant Run again. And, yeah. and they become the people that refer you or use you again. So treat everybody as if they're already a client. Take them under your wing, advise them, be a resource to them, and kind of treat everybody with the same level of respect and care as if they were already clients of yours. Wow. Yeah. Hey, lot, um, Greg, uh, yeah, Matt hit on something there that I just want to ask you specifically about. Over here, down here in Australia, Facebook and specifically, you know, the relatively new edition of Facebook Live is seen by many real estate agents uh, as an, an optional extra, maybe to be dabbled with, possibly to be ignored, Mm -hmm. um, but certainly not to be mastered to Greg's level of expertise. What would you say to that both presently, the way you execute, and for the future? How is that attitude of social media, and in particular Facebook, and in particular Facebook Live, if you have that attitude to those media moving forward, what's the ramifications for that for the agent that is wanting to not adopt? Then you're going to die. You're going to die. Dinosaurs ruled the earth. Look what happened to them. We're using them as fuel or in petrol. I can believe is what you guys call it. <laughs> you know, but uh, but I mean, it, 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 you're going to be go you're going to die by the wayside because live video is is is, is here and it's not going to be going away. We have you know Periscope, which is Twitter's version of live video. Instagram Live has live video. Uh, Facebook has live video. There's going to be more platforms that have live streaming video. And the reason why it's so powerful is because it gives people an opportunity opportunity to go behind the scenes behind the curtain. You know, you can open up the kimono and show them what your day-to-day -day life is. You can show how what you do on a daily basis. So we're clients that think that you don't work for your money. You can show them all the behind the scenes things that you're doing. You can preview, like let's say you guys have a, a property coming on the market, do Facebook Live and you know, people in the states can see it live live streaming and we can go back 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 up go look over here at the kitchen or look show me the backyard again or show me the master bedroom again or whatever it is but it's such a uh, people have had gloss over produ uh, high production value videos forever in a day you know we talked about some of the people that you rub elbows with those folks are used to post-production and pre-production this is just straight production so you mm -hmm. screw up 
You screwed up. Who gives a shit? Keep moving. Guess what? You now humanized yourself. You're no longer the, the smiling, gleaming face with your, you know, your, you know, your 80s headshot going on. I mean, you're actually a human being. They can hear you, see you, get to know you because communication is done in three different ways. 7% of it is going to be the actual words coming out of your mouth. 38% is going to be your tonality, but 55% of it is done by body language because your human brain is it's wired to look at another human and in you instantaneous judgment calls of what that other person is, a, a friend, a foe, and, or a couple other options in there, but you need to have that there. That's why the live video is powerful beyond words. And by 2020, they're saying that 80% of Facebook is going to be live streaming. Wow. So you've got to get on board with this and they're doing a, they're doing uh, testing specifically with real estate to showcase different you know showcase how you can use it in real estate i use another camera called an insta 360 go to insta360.com and it's a little 360 degree camera that i mount on the back of my iphone i shoot 360 degree videos of my properties and i can go live from that camera to facebook they can sit there and just spin this thing around and look at it as i'm talking it's unbelievably powerful. I get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of views just from doing something. And the thing costs $200 on Amazon. Come on. Wow. It's easy. Yep. Wow. I love it. And so, Matt, um, there's a whole lot of stuff we could pull apart there. We could stick for a lot of time in Quadrant I One right could. there. But that being said, <laughs> let me ask you, what it, I love what Greg just said. Now, I mean, he made a few assumptions that people have, in real estate have been doing high production, live quality videos or whatever. What well, we found out here in Australia, so few agents were doing that. Um, yes, yes, but your, but your agency, you have an, an agent. I don't, know, I don't know if they're in Perth or where they are, but they are my idols when it comes to video because they sell super high end luxury real estate. And they had this smoking hot chick was basically butt naked. And she was like, help, I'm strapped being to the, Strapped to the chair. Yeah, that's neo oh, real estate. My. Yeah, God. that one was very controversial. But many of my guys, like Ooh. those guys, um, most of the guys who do that crazy stuff, that's this out-of-the-box thing I was talking right. about. But yeah. literally that accounts for 0.1% of the industry that are willing to do that sort of stuff. And they're mainly my clients because we go that far. Um, we had one guy, um, we've had him dress up as celebrities and do... A good quality filming, but entertainment kind yeah. of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so agree. But still, the majority of our industry never even adopted the high quality production stuff. Which is, but here's the thing that, that fascinates me: when that one percent of the agents who make all the money do it, and the ninety percent of the agents who are really one step above broke don't do it, they still don't join the dots and think, "Wow, maybe I should do that thing that I'm a little bit uncomfortable." with. But, um, mm -hmm. but so Matt, Matt, on, on everything that Greg said about Facebook, what are some of those um, executables you've seen him do, like the Insta360, which by the way, I'm prepared. I've got notes. I'm taking notes, lads. <laughs> what are some of those daily executables you've seen Greg do really well that um, perhaps that, you know, um, you've coached him in or whatever, the, however it is, whether he came up with it himself. What are some of the mm -hmm. well-executed <laughs> daily Facebook fundamentals that you've seen Greg that you've sort of thought, that's a winner? Well, Greg, I'm just going to, no, I'm going to take, take credit for everything that you do. And I'm going to say that I strategically advise Greg in everything that he does. Uh, no, that's, uh, so Greg is, Greg is very good at just being, he lives and breathes social media. And so we're, we're someone like me, even I have to consciously think about, okay, what do I want to share with people that I think is going to be useful and valuable and worth paying for, even though I'm giving it away for free. Greg does that without trying because he's documenting his life and he's doing valuable, useful things for the human race uh, when he's out there selling real estate. And so now don't, don't tell Greg I said that, please, please plug your ears. But, uh, Greg, so you're, you're out there doing open houses, you're door knocking, you are going on CMAs, you're going on appointments and stuff like that. So you will share uh, when you're out there, you'll just flip on, on the iPhone real quick and do a quick Facebook Live from a new listing or when you're walking through a neighborhood and you're talking about the neighborhood, you're talking because you have the, the information in the tip of your tongue anyway because you, you're so experienced. And so for, especially for new agents or agents that want to like level up how the marketplace perceives them. Greg is a great person just to pay attention to and freaking copy his content and copy yep. what he does uh, because he really does really without trying just being Greg being Greg. He does a great job of putting content out there that's valuable. It's useful to the people that live in his area. It's genuinely worth paying for in the sense that it's in depth. It's spot on. It's actually useful to them. Uh, and so that that's 
that would be my advice is just follow him on Facebook and just watch what he's doing. Yeah. Is that uh, and, Greg's, and um, well, Greg, let me ask you, is that your personal profile that you live stream from or do you syndicate to pages? Like which particulars if we went down in that? So great question. Yeah, we syndicate, we, we, I broadcast from my own personal page. Right now, the profiles of this recording, it is a red shirt with a black hat and I'm pointing to it and it says real estate life on it. Follow me there. Uh, you can see my, I do live cold calls on a daily basis, Monday through Thursday. You can watch and interact with me there. But I also, the way that the content that we're talking about here, it's not like I'm some, you know, no genius out here. I just went and found shit to put out there. So I mean, it went to realtytimes.com and realtytimes.com is an information aggregator where there's seven different categories under consumer advice and it's buyers, sellers, renters, new homes, homeowners, all kinds of different articles. You know, like a page, page and a half little articles. You can take them, read them, bar from back out on a video, which I mean, say them back out onto a video. <laughs> um, and then you can do it live streaming, but if you do it on a daily basis or maybe three times a week, you'll never have to worry about coming up with content because the content's already there. There's so much content. We're, we're, we're a content rich society worldwide. That's not the issue anymore because free information is free now, but it, it, you, it, it all becomes white noise because there's so much of it. I mean, there's another place you can go to um, realtor.com and then go to news and advice. And they have a whole series of different categories of like how to buy, how to sell, you know, a bunch of other stuff. They have really, really catchy titles. You can watch little videos there. You can go to Pinterest and type in real estate marketing or real estate tips and take home sheets and start talking about them. I mean, just, just start thinking of what you'd want to, what you'd want to listen to or hear, or maybe ask a client, what are some topics that they're, they're foggy on and then go do a video about them. I mean, there just, it just doesn't stop with the ability to, to bring good content that's relevant because if you become redundant, on your information and people get bored of shit and they move on. That's why I say, get those, you know, reality times, pick one video or one topic from each of the categories. Therefore every day is a different, different topic, but it's still based around real estate. Now, mm. then now you become relevant to the homeowners and the buyers because they now go, dude, Glenn is the man, dude, that boy knows everything about real estate. I'm going to go talk to him, you know, yeah. because you're there yeah. and, and marketing, it takes on, on Matt, and, you know, I think it's eight, time, eight impressions, then you can start renting space in someone's head. And that's in the written form. So imagine if they can start seeing you, hearing you. I mean, we're vibing here on a video because you saw us and we're not, we're kicking it. You know, imagine if that can be the same thing for, for buyers and sellers. They're like, dude, this, this guy's fucking cool, man. I'm going to go and call, call that guy. Yeah. And it's free. It's free, free, free. I mean, I mean, if you take, oh, if you do a live video, here's a cool part. If you do a live video about a subject matter, then you take that video and you download it and then upload it into Facebook for a lot for an ad. The, 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 the Facebook will recognize the coding that's a Facebook live video and it'll push it to the top of the stream even more when you boost it. So it doesn't hurt you. So my question was, if you, because here's, I suppose, where my marketing brain goes. And I know, we, you know what, I think this whole call is going to be in quadrant one up here. But um, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, Matt. I live stream Facebook from my page and then boost direct and then syndicate to my mm -hmm. profile because many of my guys do want the specifics. So really, that's my first question. Am I doing it wrong if I Facebook live direct from my page and then boost direct or should I do what uh, Greg is saying and do it from my personal profile and then download it and re-upload it and Facebook will recognize it as their own uh, anyway? Well, it, it depends on where your audience already is. But I, I do believe that with a, with a database of 5,000 people, if you curate who your friends are on Facebook, you could literally never have a business page. You could only have your personal Facebook profile. And as long as you curated who those 5,000 people are and constantly upgrade them throughout your real estate career, you could make millions upon millions of dollars and never have a database bigger than the 5,000 people on your personal Facebook friend list. Agreed. The other segment of that is that Facebook pages, Facebook has so devalued them by making your posts. Uh, now, maybe it's a little bit different. They're given a little bit more of a push to live video. But even so, when somebody likes your Facebook page, it's just, it doesn't mean as much as it did two or three years ago. It means so much less. So Greg, when you go, so like when we switch over and we're gonna, we're gonna broadcast our show as soon as we get done recording this for the CD of the month, Greg is gonna broadcast from his personal page in from then from there into various other groups. And that's our main focus is we want to broadcast into groups because two things happen. Number one, Greg's personal profile where the original broadcast is streaming 
notifies his personal friends that it's going live. Then every single group, because Facebook is really pushing groups over pages, every single group sends out a notification. So we had, I think Greg, you said one of our viewers sent in like a screenshot of the 15 different notifications he gets when we go live on the show. Uh, yeah. And that's something you can produce in your, in your local market by broadcasting from your personal profile over to maybe a couple pages that you have and then into local real estate groups where you have pre-existing condition to broadcast in to bring value to those areas, mm -hmm. to those groups. Yeah, and that's yeah, one use, of the keys, isn't it? Yeah, now go ahead, Greg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use a system called Live Leap. Yeah, do as, do I. as do I. Okay, yep. use Live Leap, okay. And you, know, you have to have full admin access to go to those groups. You do. But you can, you can just get permission for to now. go to the pages. Right, for yeah, now. Yeah, that like pa pages, yeah. Pages, they've already set up a special level of access where you can broadcast live onto a page without having a bunch of other permissions. Uh, yeah. They'll probably do that pretty soon with groups. So if mm -hmm. you're listening to this later, make sure to check back on that because it may have already changed. Nice, mm -hmm. yeah, nice. So Greg, when, let me ask you this, mate. And then I'm gonna, I want Matt's take on this as well. Um, a lot of your stuff that you talk about, your broadcasting, and I can't wait to go back and watch some back issues of your various Facebook lives. So if you're doing one of them a day and stuff, or maybe a couple a day, whatever the case may be, is there for the person, see here in Australia, our average is every five to seven years, a consumer out there in real estate world partakes in a real estate transaction. So down here in the interim, Many of our consumers aren't that really re interested in what's going on in how to add top value, top dollar to your home and all that sort of thing. Is there a danger if you're spouting real estate content often about adding tips and value to your home, anything about real estate, and many of your friends, family or whatever are in the middle of that five to seven year gap where they don't give a stuff about real estate because right now they're not doing anything. Is there a danger of you being, I suppose, ignored when, you know, like some of my guys do content, like just recently Easter just happened. They were all over their communities, nothing to do with real estate, but they were legends with hundreds and hundreds of community members all just talking about, here's me giving a kid an Easter egg. Here's 200 kids all because of me getting all the chocolate they can <laughs> eat kind of thing. So I suppose speak to that. Real estate content that really, unless someone is in real estate mode, they really don't care about versus um, other stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so here's my, my personal opinion on it. And no, I do not think that you'll be discounted if they see you go live. The, the one thing that I think would be the positive is that you're going to be seen more often and you're going to be remembered as the real estate guy or the real estate gal. And you're building a library of all these videos. So once you get done, with you have all these videos, let's say all of a sudden, Glenn, you're like, Hey, Greg, I've been watching your videos for like two years, man. I love your stuff. You're awesome. Um, hey, we're thinking about selling. Uh, do you have any tips? Yes. And then you go into your videos, you're like, eh, boop, click that one, throw it over to them, let them watch it. Here's a video I did about some tips on how to get your house ready for, for market. It, it allows people to kind of binge on you, It'll, you know, get to know you. I mean, I, have a, I was talking to a lady yesterday, and she's like, oh, my God, Greg, I've been watching your videos. I already feel like I know you. And so, I mean, that's the same. This is the, the modern version of postcards and newsletters. I remember when my father, he's been in business for 45 years. He used to send out this, like this kind of yellow with black writing on it. It was a ugly ass newsletter, but people would take vanilla envelopes and they would just dump out years worth of, of newsletters going, I've been following you since blank, blank time. That's the exact same thing that will take place when they, when you walk into the house and be like, Oh my God, I feel, I can't believe you've helped me so much with this, that, and another thing. And you know, my wife thinks you're awesome. And my kid, you know, did this with, because of your video and thank you so much. It's, it's, you're going to be like family when you walk through the front door. So don't stop, but be relevant, be, be entertaining. If you're going to be like wet cardboard on a rainy day and just hello, uh, welcome uh, to real estate update. Hello. Uh, <laughs> click oh delete. <laughs> that just hurt me. I, 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 I'm pain. I know. I physically recoiled. <laughs> See, Matt and I, Matt and I met at another company. He was my coach at another company where he was, he, that's how, how we became friends. And a lot of the agents, um, when well, I've seen a couple of their videos, they are like that because so many people are stiff in front of a camera because they are afraid of it. But the one thing people need to understand about a camera is that little thing right here, that thing called an eye, a lens. When you talk to a human being, you don't talk and look at both of the eyes. It's physically impossible. You'll go nuts. You always pick one eye or the other, right? Well, just view the camera as a single eye, relax, have some fun, and you know, do videos about something that you know about. <laughs> uh, hello, 
<laughs> Matt, what would you say, bud, on the argument? And I just love what I'm hearing, by the way. It's like I'm speaking into a mirror because many of my guys that kind of do what Greg has said literally have that experience. I'll, I'll tell you one. Chris Gilmore, my, my Greg, um, he, he was being interviewed by some sellers who were maybe mid-30s selling their home. And the parents came in and started treating him like a normal real estate agent would be treated, putting him through the ringer, so to speak. Oh, you tell me or whatever. And the daughter of the, the couple who was selling, the younger couple, said, Mum, Dad, shut the hell up. Don't you know who this is? That's Chris <laughs> Gilmore. He was on stage with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He hung out with Richard Branson. He's written a book on this. It's like they chastised their parents for daring to insult their celebrity guest in their home. It was, I, I sat there like Hannibal on the A-team when I heard that story going, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> you know? so, so Matt, I suppose my final question, because I know we've got to get you guys on the way in a moment. And by the way, you've got to follow Greg McDaniel, as Greg just said, Greg McDaniel on Facebook. Hit me up if you can't find which Greg McDaniel. Follow him so you can get those tips of how Greg is executing this. And I love it. When our man Gary V says ideas are shit, execution is the game. Greg right. is obviously an execution legend. My final question really for you, uh, Matt, is around that subject that Greg just broached, around many real estate agents still think that their job is to be a professional. And if they're in there using conversational language, and I love that Greg's already going, no! Um, uh, but, but what's your take on the age-old adage that we have to be professional? And I'll tell you, the only reason I'm wearing a suit and tie at four in the morning is because after our two recordings, this one, and for your guys, I'm off to do a presentation first thing, <laughs> so i got to go. Um, but what's your take on the whole professional in history of real estate versus the now of being human? Well, essentially the landscape has shifted underneath those people's feet. That's the bottom line. So with the rise of social media and all the stuff that's taken place outside of real estate, expectations have changed and now authenticity beats professionalism every time. Now that's working off the assumption that you actually know what you're talking about because that's something that people feel on a subconscious level. So when you know what you're talking about, you speak in a certain way. It's just not confidence that you can fake. It's those little indicators that you give that people pick up in their subconscious when you know what you're talking about and there's a depth behind what you're saying. Uh, Greg, you and I just did like a, a training video recording earlier today where yeah. we were talking about jargon not to use and never to <laughs> use. There's a lot of it in real estate because people don't care and it's more important for you to actually speak in a way to where they understand what you said and not just use the jargon to make them feel like you know what you're talking about. It's actually better to be understood and be clear. I mean, Glenn, you know this better than anything else. Better to be clear than clever. The, the, the marketing adage, I love that. Um, and the same thing goes for now. So Greg, I mean, you're, you can give a better perspective on this, but I mean, you had kind of a radical conversion point in how you present yourself um, to the outside world. I've gone through the same thing where you go from feeling like you're an outsider, feeling like you don't belong, to all of a sudden getting around the insiders and other people perceiving you as an insider or perceiving that you know what you're talking about. And then you feel that weight lift off your shoulders where you're like, wait a minute, I don't have to present myself in any other way than I am. Like for example, right now I'm wearing a blazer that I threw over the t-shirt that I have on. Um, I mean, that's the bottom line is uh, <laughs> that's, I don't need to do anything extra because I know what I'm talking about and because I send out those subconscious indicators that people know. And uh, so Greg, you can comment on that from your perspective, but uh, you've gone through something very, very, very similar. Yeah. I mean, I just basically said, fuck it. One day I was so <laughs> tired. I was so uncomfortable. I was on trying to be all prim and proper. I had my slacks on, tucked in my shirt, got my tie on. I'm like, woo, look professional. I'm like, this is the most ungodly, uncomfortable get up to be wearing on a daily basis. And I literally, I, I just remember one day I literally, I said, you know what? I'm fucking done. That's it. And I undid my tie, I unbuttoned my shirt, pulled out my, pulled out my pants, pulled out my shirt from being tucked into my pants. <laughs> no visual you, people. You, you, guys um, do, you guys do real estate different over there. Than we <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's an incentivized uh, negotiation on commissions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I pull, pulled out my shirt and I just said, I, I got home the next day and I put on my $30 pair of Lucky Brands jeans. I have a, uh, I rock my uh, my Vans tennis shoes, which of course I'm not wearing right now, and I, I don't tuck on my shirt. You know that I have custom dress shirts on and, and you know sports coats. But so it's like, 
professional up top. I don't give a shit down below, but it's comfortable for me. It's me. I own it. And it's, it's acceptable to, uh, to the general public. And I actually, there's a, there's a, uh, someone I was talking to about an opportunity and I said, well, do I have to dress up? They're like, ah, Greg, you're fine. You're just better than most real estate agents. I'm like, oh, okay, that works for me. <laughs> but I own it. I own my own skin. Like Matt was talking about, like the mm -hmm. first listing appointment I went into wearing this about two years ago, I said, hey, I got to let you guys know, I'm kind of a laid back guy and I'm going to be in my jeans. I hope that's okay with you. And they're like, oh, dude, we're just the same. No problem. Locked wow. up and listed the house, you know, 800,000 yeah. and then turn yeah. around. Sold them we're talking 4. about not, not a $150,000 condo either. No, yeah. $800,000 house and a $1.4 million buy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just you have to own your own skin. Be happy to be in your own skin mm -hmm. and find your own style. So, I mean, Matt has a t-shirt with a sports coat. I got the dress shirt with the sports coat. We're comfortable in what we wear. Therefore, people are comfortable listening to us. Yeah. And my team behind me right now are probably barfing in their mouth a little bit going, oh my gosh, shut up, Greg. Oh, well, I saw there was a lady behind you there sitting there having a stretch before. And I'm thinking, beware, young lady. You'll see the world is seeing you stretch and not hustle. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, but I, I, I love that. <laughs> um, but I do love that because when I spoke with two people about this subject, one was Eric Thomas. And as you guys know, he goes into Fortune 500 companies wearing J's, uh, a hoodie or a, a T-shirt just mm -hmm. and, and kicking it. He went and he, I've got to tell you guys this. He went and had an audience with Warren Buffett. He, it was a one-on-one -on -one meet and greet with Warren Buffett, E.T., the hip hop preacher and Warren Buffett. And he for a moment was tempted to wear a suit and tie, right? He was tempted. Mm -hmm. But then he said, nah, what would that say to the kids who are looking at me talking about be yourself, be authentic, and be, mm -hmm. if he goes and puts on a tie? So right. he went and saw Warren Buffett in the, in the When You Want to Succeed t-shirt. Man, I was there when he graduated. Uh, and for many of E.T.'s fans, they know that he went um, from a homeless high school dropout as a teenager to mm -hmm. he just recently, a uh, year before last, got a PhD. And I went to Michigan State. I was there when he graduated. So here he is in the regalia and all that. Underneath that, he had the T-shirt and he was wearing Jordans. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, he, when he walked across the thing, man. So, and, and Larry Wingert, actually, to something Matt said, Larry Wingert, I don't know if you guys know Larry mm -hmm. over there, yeah? When I met Larry down here in Australia and Larry was telling me that when you do what he does, when you dress outlandishly, you have to be, Matt, you use the term depth of knowledge. You have to be better depth of knowledge, so to speak. He didn't use your wording, but he said, you have to be more talented than your professional counterpart. But if you are more talented than your professional counterpart, you'll be exponentially more successful because of the outlandish nature of you. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that like when, when you're putting on whatever it is, if it's, if it's putting on a suit and that's not authentic to you, whatever the case is, when you're trying to be something that you're not, uh, even if it's like doing overly produced video, it automatically puts distance there. So the question is, is the distance worth it? Mm. Now in some professions, maybe it is. Um, you know, if, if your clients view that and they need that distance to feel better about you and that's part of the credibility package, then that's fine. That's one thing. Now, now, 20 years ago in financial services, absolutely. I do not show up to your appointment with a high net worth client wearing anything other than a three-piece suit. But mm. we're like things have just like society has changed and now it's to the point where when you put out something into the world that creates that, it creates more distance, there's somebody else that's doing something that has no distance between them and it feels more authentic and it feels more real. And the thing is that we connect with that more mm. and they're so I mean, up business <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. it is um, you know well Greg, just you take a look say? at the, yeah look Sorry. at look at t look at t-mobile all right the ceo the current ceo you know he was all high and tight and mr prim and proper and he finally let it literally let his hair down he grew out his hair and he dressed super casual and it changed the entire culture of t-mobile to a much more you know profound impact he's the, the company is skyrocketing it was plummeting for a long period of time, but he, then he changed it. He got down in the, he got down into the trenches with his folks, but he owned who he was at his core. And then the people around his company surrounded him and supported him on that. And the same thing will happen when you do real estate. There will be people that will work with you because you, you wore a nice three piece suit and you wear the wingtip shoes and you look good and you say the right things. But do you really like the dickheads? No, you put up with them and they, and they're putting up with you. Cause like, I see you really being authentic here. But if you just say, you know what to hell with you, homie, I don't like you. You don't like me. I don't need your business. I'm going to go work with my, my tribe. You're going to be so much more for, for filled at the end of the day because you only have you know time and knowledge those are the two things you bring to this business and if you waste your time and waste your knowledge on people who don't respect you and aren't appreciative of what you do for them 
then you are literally wasting your time and it's going to give you gray hairs and a heart condition sooner in life because you're not having fun with the business and you're probably going to ultimately stop doing it because you get told to go F off enough times or get cheated on by your clients and to go buy a house or sell a house with someone else and because there's no loyalty, because there's no authentic bond, then you're going to want to go do something else where you have more fun. So yeah, own, well, mm. own your own crazy. I mean, whatever version that is, own your own crazy. Wow. Uh, and that, I tell you, that, that scenario you just mentioned is what drove me from listing and selling real estate to searching the world for thousands and thousands of hours of study to try and figure out that solution. Because like you just said, I left the business of listing and selling real estate because of that functionality. I wish there was a me when I was listing and selling that could have told me that, but there wasn't one. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, oh. mm. and my, my father cringes. I mean, I say fuck all the time. He <laughs> hates it. You know, I, I, I dress in certain ways. He didn't like it so much in the beginning. You know, I always have some crazy idea to come along and, you know, do something a little bit different. And they used to call me nuts until it all started working. Yeah. Then those million dollar listings start coming in and he starts saying, Ooh, maybe what was that word? F fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Exactly, but just own your own crazy, man. Yeah, just own yeah, it and yeah. live it and run with it. Well, in, in the last couple of minutes left, I want to go back to something, um, Greg, you mentioned about your tribe. And this goes back to the question that you semi-dodged and you didn't quite answer Glenn's question. I wanted to, to clear this up, which is, <laughs> what do you talk about something other than real estate? Yes. And, if, and if you don't, do you risk losing people? Uh, I think the, the best answer to that is to build your tribe, not just by being who you are in terms of how you look, but also being who you are in terms of what you talk about on social mm -hmm. media. So, I mean, Greg, for you, that might be, you know, micro brews and, and, you know, you're passionate about food and things like that. So you go around and you, you do videos with local restaurants and coffee shops and micro breweries and stuff like that. For me, that's uh, the business books that I read, you know, the guys that I, I have as podcast clients, you know, sharing their content, talking about what I'm learning from them, uh, talking about what I'm learning from books, sharing books, like, which is a big, uh, that's like the currency of, of ultra successful people. It's like, Hey, what, what's the coolest book you've read recently? So that works in my world. So it attracts the people that I want into my life by what I put out there. And this, you can do the same thing with, if you want to talk about wine, if that's your tribe, mm -hmm. talk about that 80% of the time, talk about real estate 20% of the time. Yeah. And that's that ratio that will keep people engaged with you on social wow. or, or live or whatever the case is without like in between those five to seven years when they're not going to move. Cause that you're absolutely right, Glenn, they tune it out. They don't care about real estate. They may remember you as the real estate guy, but how do you keep them engaged in those middle years? And, and that's, mm. that's the answer right now is to talk about what you're passionate about that strikes a chord and build a tribe around that thing. And then the real estate is just, it's the, it's the jab, 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 right hook. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Well, as you were describing that talk about wine for 80% of the time and what's Gary's thing. Oh yeah. The jets. I mean, Jesus mm -hmm, Christ, mm -hmm. if that man, you know, so I see that Gary is a perfect execution of what, what you just described, man. So yeah, agreed. beautiful. I love it. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is I agree with you. And when, you know, the other company where I'm at, Matt at, you know, my current coach, he, uh, he and I are constantly trying to find things to talk about to our client base that has nothing to do with real estate. Yeah. Like we're going to release a video right now. Uh, our next one going out is going to be the seven restaurants that our team likes the most here in Danville, you know, California. Mm -hmm. You know, just a, nice. showcase your life to them and highlight the things that you like. Just become relevant in all different aspects of life and have fun doing it. Because if they see you having fun, then you're, it's going to be fun for them to watch it. Mm. Secret to my success is that, I tell you. that I think half my clients, because many of them have been around for five plus years as coaching members. And understand, they got my content really in the first year or two. You know, mm -hmm. they're just hanging around to see what crazy shit this crazy bastard does next. <laughs> so now we need to put um, Greg on mute there, Matt, because I need to cover up Greg and Greg go like this, la la la. I want to sneakily say, Matt, Matt, I'm just going okay. to have to say, Matt, okay. how do we get, now there's that tips book that Greg's got, right? Now I know it's worth money and we should be selling it, right? I know that. <laughs> Can we get a copy for free on the very sneaky thing with his scripts and his dialogues and all of that? I'm, yeah. only, I'm joking, but you know, <laughs> um, man, I, I, I would love for these guys to learn more about what Greg does. Sign up and watch mm -hmm. him do it live would be great. But that tips book, how do we, how did my crew get a copy of that? The, super easy. Just, uh, just go to myfavoritescripts.com. And that's just a free uh, download PDF. It's got all of uh, all of Greg's favorite scripts, including like the latest stuff, Greg, that you've been tinkering with, including mm -hmm. the, the go for no script, uh, yeah. stuff for just listed, just sold, everything from client management to online lead follow-up is in there, uh, and uh, including links 
to videos where I made Greg go through each of those scripts <laughs> and role played with him uh, so that you don't just get it on the printed page, but you get it in video form too. I tell you, I'm tempted to just say, look, can I just edit this bit out? Can I put it up on a website where that's got a $400 price tag attached to it and we'll split the dough, right? That's right. That's Deal. what I want to do, but we're not Deal. there. But I tell you, so guys who are listening to this, you guys have just had a little treat of half an hour or whatever, but I tell you the guys, the de- what Matt just said, the depth and weight of the knowledge within these two minds, you need to avail yourself of that. So go to myfavoritescripts.com, go and follow the guys on Facebook. It has been my honor guys, and I can't wait to the next round where we can somehow drag you guys kicking and screaming down here to Australia to hang and bang with our crew. I'm down, dude. I am totally <laughs> down. I've, always, I've literally, it's always been a, a lifelong goal of mine to get go to Australia. Wow. I'm sorry, as, as, as American as it sounds, I want to see kangaroos and wallabies. That's it. I see one of those fuckers and I'm done. I'm like, and back on the plane. <laughs> as long as it's not accompanied by a snake or a crocodile. Now, I won't, before, I want to mention this, guys. We, we haven't even mentioned the name of the show, which we're about to, to have Glenn onto our show, which is Real Estate Uncensored. So another great way to follow us is just go to iTunes, subscribe to the show there. You'll get the latest episodes automatically where we interview and, and hang out and mastermind with guys like Glenn and some of the top guys in real estate uh, and marketing and sales all across the world. Uh, we go live three days a week. We might be a little off of your time zone, but you can follow <laughs> us easily on uh, on iTunes and get the audio version that way. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. So uh, no, I'm glad. That, that's what I love doing to my guys. That's why I'm seen as a little bit out of the box is because I go out and find the guys that they may never have heard of. And you know what? Half my guys are probably sitting there. What do you mean? Those guys, I listen to them every day. They're like, what do you think? But you know, so no, it's, uh, that's been great hanging out, guys. Guys uh, who are listening, go and get yourself those scripts. Subscribe on the iTunes Real Estate Uncensored podcast. And now I can start getting nervous because I'm about to have the tables turned but these guys are going to have me on their show. Uh, Guys, thanks for hanging out with us a little bit and I can't wait to continue our friendship moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Glenn, totally, man. It has been an utter pleasure to get to get to be on your show, man. And we cannot wait to torture you on ours. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. Wow. Well, there you go. I hope you liked the episode. If you liked that, then what you need to do is you need to subscribe. You need to get more of this craziness because we got more are coming. Uh, I'm never standing still and we've got so many more guests. We've got so many more strategies, more out of the box thinking. So if you haven't subscribed, literally, you're like throwing away thousands of dollars. Because I tell you, if you haven't subscribed, you don't come back. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find you, I'm going to market to you, and I'm going to charge you for the very stuff that on this podcast we give away for free. So whack that subscribe button on whatever your favorite podcast uh, weapon of destruction is, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.